Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital recap for March 13th through 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day late. Yes. You know, they don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day on General Hospital. Which is so sad because we just saw Christina talking to Sunny. She should have been leaving to go handle the St. Patrick's Day party. At Charlie's. Yes. And why isn't Kelly's that has a shamrock in its logo Mm -hmm. doing some kind of... Yeah, they should have green milkshakes or something. Yes. All right, we can get into that. (laughs) Very disappointing. The only Port Charles pipeline... That we received was from Peace Mazelis, okay. and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, written in many times. Just little tidbits here and there, sometimes comments on, very big fan of ours, which, yay, love, thank you. Hey, I've been watching this wonderful show on Netflix called Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which I went to my Netflix and was like, oh, have I started, I watched half of the first episode and apparently never went back to it. Ah, Okay. It's like a musical. Every episode, well, I don't know if it's every episode because still you I haven't watched made it. half of one. The very first episode of The Halfway, and I love musicals, so I'm kind of like, why didn't I go back and watch it? I also never watched Glee, though. Yeah, I didn't watch Glee either. I, like, I'd get it here or there because um, my niece would watch it, but I didn't watch that. But I love a lot of the people who have come from Glee, mm-hmm. like Darren Chris and yeah. Jonathan Groff you, are. You would like Glee. Two that I really, I don't know if I would, though, because if they don't do what I want them to do with a song, I won't like it. That doesn't say everything about (laughs) Shannon's personality. (laughs) No, there are certain (laughs) things that I, like, if they ever did a Beatles cover and I don't feel like they did a good job at it, I would be disappointed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did, so. The first and only season that I really ever watched American Idol, they finally got the rights to do the Beatles. Mm -hmm. They did amazing with them. But it could have gone so badly. But it did not. Back to our Pretty friend. Pretty much it's more the Beatles. You know that I do there's know. like a handful of people that if they did a song that I was just like, mm. There's a few people that have done really, really good covers. Back to. Yes, back to our friend. Crazy ex-girlfriend. <laughs> it has amazing musical numbers and is all about women empowerment and takes time to really break down the term crazy ex-girlfriend from a psychological and sociological perspective. It is highly recommended. We will have to. We will have out. to watch this. Absolutely. Anyway, the reason why I just like the fact that you really could have written that in, and it would have been appropriate. Exactly. So, thank you. Anyway, the reason I, why I'm letting you know about it is because Sonia Eddy played a guest role in season one. Mm. She was a professor who wouldn't take anything less than their potential from their students. It was bittersweet seeing her in an old role that was new to me. Mm. Oh. The episode was season one, episode 19. If you are interested, let me know if you check it out. Again, watched half of the first one. I would definitely check it out. But I I need to go back and get back into it because I feel like that would be something. Yes. Good. It is sad to see Sonia Eddy, though. Like, we are going to do a 411 about her, obviously, waiting until they do their tribute but as I was looking up the information, even on YouTube now, every clip is what she passed away from, how she passed away. Some of them completely conflicting, but like, that's all you could find. It wasn't, you really had to type in what you were searching for in order to get the YouTube clip from GH. Yes. She was also in Seinfeld. She yep. was on Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. She was the postal worker or no, she was the, she was Rebecca De Mornay who was at the homeless shelter that they kept donating the bottoms of the muffins to. And she came because that's when Elaine. (laughs) Yes, she (laughs) inspired the top of the muffin to you just to have the muffin top. And then she's like, do you think that they don't want the muffin top? You're just giving them stumps. (laughs) Okay. Yes. Okay. So anyway, you are amazing. Keep being the beautiful souls that you are. Oh, thank you. I know. Uh, 
I just love, like, I just want to frame that email. There's so many good things in it. Thank you. But definitely thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, and if you guys ever see people in a role that you think would be, so James Patrick Stewart was also on Seinfeld, and he was Elaine's boyfriend that was obsessed with the song Desperado. So anytime it came on, you had to stop talking. Like he, and he just zoned. Oh. It was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Did you love him back then as much as you love him now? I didn't know that it was him. I was a teenager. Oh, okay. I didn't know what was going on. Okay. But then somebody pointed it out. And I went back and watched. I was like, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you printed off some pictures and framed <laughs> them. <laughs> well, she tried to make it their song. And he's like, no, you need to have your own song. This oh. is not a song I'm going to share with somebody. Okay. This is mine. Hmm. If we ever get to talk to him, we'll have to ask him how he feels about being that crazy. <laughs> People tweet at him it all the time. Aww. So he talks about it. Yeah. <laughs> so go watch Seinfeld. We are actually... Well, because... I started doing a spreadsheet of all of the general hospital actors that were on Desperate Housewives. Yes. There's a ton. Yes. A ton. We will have to do that for one one. There's still some I have to finish, but there's a lot. Catherine Gotti? Mm hmm. Did I say Catherine or Kathleen? You said Catherine, but yes, Kathleen. Wow. <laughs> You're the one that you called know it who I'm, I'm talking like... about. Yes. <laughs> you know that I know who we're talking exactly, about. Exactly. So I didn't even catch it. Yes. But like Amanda said, we are planning to do a 411 all about Epiphany. It's been in the works for a little while. We know that it's, we don't do spoilers, but we know that it's coming up. So. Right. I just didn't want to finish it and then watch the episode and be like, oh, I, I didn't even about say that. to mention that. Right. Or vice versa, I want to call them out if they miss something good. <laughs> right. So. Right. But also, that gives us the complete picture. Yes. So. All right. Well, I'm making my, I don't want to deal with it face. Yes. Yes, you are. <sighs> so let's talk about this week's show. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> All right. also doing something for the 60th anniversary. So here's the thing. Everyone's going to, everything's basically going to be a week pushed back because we finally found out the date that they're doing yes the epiphany one so that will be the week after that episode airs and then the week after that is when we will do our recap of the 60 years of general hospital we are going to break down the decades not in super super <laughs> detailed each episode will be 3 hours <laughs> no basically we're giving 10 minutes to each decade so that way it gives us about an hour yes so um but if there's something that you absolutely loved from the 60s 70s 80s 90s early 2000s the 10s i guess is what we're saying oh, now. i don't know but you know where i'm going feel free to write in pure 54 podcast at gmail.com especially if there was the storyline that resonates the most with you like we talk about lucky and liz and karen and jagger all that well amanda talks about karen and jagger mm -hmm. and robin and stone all the time <laughs> i talk about lucky and liz all the time she was still a fan then yes but yeah so like lucky was who kind of really got me hooked. I mean, it's Jonathan Jackson. Hello. Right. So this week. Yeah. On Monday, Cody has a close call. No, but okay. On Tuesday, Laura is put on the spot. Kinda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, Laura tries to keep the peace. Yes. Thursday, Nina gets a reality check. Maybe. Perhaps. It's not gets a reality check. It's she realizes. Yeah. Things. Right. Has a reality check. There you go. Get seems like somebody else gave it to her. Has a means she, she brought it upon finally herself. came to the understanding that it's not about her. And Friday, Robert and Diane discuss a case. Yes. Those are all accurate. They're just not very exciting they don't pull you into them no i do not have any nerd Aww. things i'm sorry there wasn't really anything i didn't watch until friday night wow yeah yep friday night okay when you want to get started uh, so monday started with cody has a close call it wasn't really a close call. Nice. It's not like he's going to get killed or something. It wasn't close call. He dropped the piece of paper that had the paternity test results on it. Mac picked it up. He took it out of Mac's hands and then got all real weird with him. And then Dante showed up and Mac left 
I don't like not understanding how they went from drinking some beers to now he's being all weird. And then finally Dante got him to tell the truth about he's known that Max been his dad for all this time. And now he doesn't know how to tell Mac that. It was kind of anticlimactic, actually. Dante alluded to when Cody said, this is seriously like promise, take it to the grave, whatever. And he's like, you know, I'm good for that. And it's like, but why? Yes. But why? I, I do like that Dante was understanding of his reason why he didn't tell him. But he's like, you are denying yourself being this man's son. Right. And having a family, finally. Right. So he was doing it more as a, a friend. And obviously, I mean, he cares deeply about Mac also. Right. But he, he wants Cody to be able to, I don't want to say benefit, but receive the kind of love that he's obviously missed. And the kind of, like you just said, like the family and everything that Mac has to offer him. He's like, I've watched him over the years. You yes. Know? And that all made sense. But I didn't like, like you said, they alluded to whatever this bigger thing is because we've been under the impression that Dante did something bad that Cody took credit for. Mm -hmm. And the way that it was played today, it was like, or this week, was it was something that Cody did and Dante was just covering for him. And I'm like, no, No. that's not because he even said said to Sam, Sam, yeah, you don't want to dig deeper or Dante's not going to be the man you thought he was. Right. So just give us the scoop on what Dante did already. Right. There has to, ooh. So maybe something to do with how they started to bring up Lois's mom, Gloria. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that was back in the old neighborhood and everything. Right. Maybe something back then. I don't know. I just took a stretch there. just be- <laughs> Only because they just made the reference to Gloria. So maybe could that have something? I don't know. But I'm with you. I just, I, I want to know because they- what did Dante do? Right. They've just dragged it out way too long. But Mac did offer to get Cody a job. He did. He did. Mac is being very... Very Mac-like. Yes. I just don't want this to be one of those things, because they keep hinting about all the baby stuff. I don't want this to be one of those things where, oh, Sam's pregnant, and then once she's pregnant, this big, deep, dark secret comes out about Dante that we've never heard about before. It's supposed to be that what breaks them up is Lulu coming out of the coma, not Dante's crazy past. Yeah. Or the fact of how he's very much, like this week... Nope, nope, no more kids. I'm good. They're teenagers. We're fine. Yeah. And uh, just let TJ and Molly have a baby. I agree. It's Can weird. we just have one? It's that's weird not- to have a baby with someone that your dad already got pregnant. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. It just is. Yeah. No polite way to say it. That's creepy. I did like the scenes with him and Drew, though, because that was very nice. You know, it's guy who is like a dad father figure Mm -hmm. obviously not taking over the role that was like my husband does with my ex and this is the my husband is the only guy that my ex has ever gotten along with there was only two guys in between but i think it's because the other two wanted to replace him and Uh, weren't just hey so you're their dad right you know i'm i'm here yeah it's a shared role you can't just take it over nope but dante brought scout to the quarter mains. I do think it's funny though that they bring them over to visit and then all the kids go upstairs. <laughs> Not really visiting with the parents or playing. No. When I went to my grandparents, we went down to the basement. All the cousins played down in the basement together. Yeah, but she wasn't really there to see her cousin. She was supposed to be there to see her dad. Yeah, but at that age, if there's kids around, it's but there's always kids at the quarter mains. You're never getting one on one time then. I don't know. He was too busy trying to get Charlotte's shares yes. anyway. So can we just jump to that and that super out of character, awkward conversation that he had with right. Laura where he's like, oh, wait, is it too soon because he died? Exactly. Do you mind if I steal your granddaughter's future from her? Yeah. Do we'll, you mind? We'll give her a good price. No, like that whole thing. Yeah. 
And then because she said no, and he's like, oh, is something up? And then he's like, oh, wait, it's because he died, huh? <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes, it is. It's- right. He's been dead less than a month, and you're already trying to take his shares? And Laura just said, I am to look over them, and if and when she turns 18, she decides to sell them to you. I will support her in that decision. Right. However, no. No. I'm not selling them. Thanks. I understand why Sam did. Yes. But Laura's not Sam, and it's a completely... It's it's different. It's different, and it, it's different especially because Laura knows that Charlotte's dad's not dead. Well, there's so that, too. She can't or no, she won't that. sell those. Although, if she was trying to be a jerk, she would have said, yes, I'll sell them. And then he would have come back from the <gasps> dead and had to reclaim them. They had the them. whole issue again. Yeah. Of- that would have been... Depending on how they did it. it either yeah. it could have been awful and boring because we've been there, done that... Or it could be really fun to see that fight again. Like, no, you shouldn't have been so quick to get my shares. I'm alive. Well, because then it shows their real motive. Yeah. Which is self-serving. Yes. None of this is actually about the quarter mains. It is self-serving to Drew and Michael for this to happen. Yep. So... So where do we want to go? Do we want to go on to... Are we sticking with the quarter mains? Because that's what, where everyone was then? That's, yeah. So the ladies are trying to plan the nurse's ball. I didn't understand them creating that drama. Oh no, is Nina going to say, yes, we can have the ballroom? Um, Nina is Maxie's kid's aunt. She's definitely going to say, sure, Maxie, go ahead. And Maxie and her had a close relationship before that. Right. Oh my gosh, guys, Amanda is defending Nina. I am. And... Mark this day. <laughs> that's true. And it's always been held there. Like, she, even if she wanted to say no out of spite, she couldn't have said no because she would look like the most wicked person in the world. Right. This wasn't a fundraiser for Carly to buy new clothes. This is a fundraiser that's gone on for years for AIDS research. Right. There's no way to say no. Right. No matter who you are. If I came to you tomorrow and said, hey, I need to use your house for this AIDS fundraiser, you can't tell me no. No. Go ahead. Exactly. So, yeah, Nina said yeah and said, let her know if there's anything else that they need or right. who she else. She was very much, yeah, and Crimson has always sponsored it, too. Exactly. So it's not like she's never been, I mean, sponsorship is not necessarily involved, boots on ground, in right. the trenches, but. Yeah. She's she's aware of it. Exactly. And the you know negative side of Nina is that she always wants to be involved in whatever the big thing is so that people will look at her and go, oh, good job. You did that. That was so nice. So why in the world would she not want to be involved in this? You had to get that in there, didn't yep. you? You couldn't just stick couldn't with it. Couldn't just be nice because <laughs> it's true. But I just felt like the whole scene was stupid because we knew Nina was going to say yes. Even I knew that and I don't like the woman. So. Yeah. But then they were starting to plan and talk about the regular donations and whatever. And they had the scene where Carly can't pay attention because she's playing with the baby. Okay, that was cute. It was cute, but meanwhile, her kid's at home with an earache. Right. I kind of feel like Carly could have phoned into that meeting and been like, yeah, tell me whatever you need. I'm home with Donna because her ears hurt. (sighs) However, Willow is sick. So was she... Was her intention to be there in case Willow needed her, even though they have the nanny and everything? I don't know, but whatever. Whatever. It was still cute watching Laura Wright play with the baby. It was cute watching her. I mean, that- but they're bringing back Magic Milo and the, or like, we don't want it. No. I'm sorry. We cannot be the only ones that are like, it we don't need it anymore. It was so good the first time. Yes. It was shocking we didn't think it was going to happen it was right. sexy because all those men are very attractive and, and we it, like, didn't expect it to happen right and it gave that like woo spunk to the show that even if that's not your cup of tea you're like man those guys look nice okay this was one of the you know pieces of the show and now we move on it's not good anymore when you keep repeating it over and over and over again and the first year it, the second year was kind of i'm not a prude <laughs> But, but yeah. it was a little bit more yeah, mm-hmm. than a daytime strip show, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever that might look like for a charity event. Right. For the public. Yes. That has children in the audience. Yes. On site in those tables. Yes. yes. Is where I'm going with that. Right. Yeah. 
I agree. The first time it was more of like an athletic type show off the body. Yeah. Look at, we have, was, did it say Magic Milo on their bums or Nurse's Ball or something? They spelled out something, something on their on bummies. Their bum, yeah. But still. Yeah. I, and mean, I mean, Cameron Matheson is very attractive. But I, I don't could do care. something else. Yeah. I, I mean, these men are hot enough that they can impress me fully clothed. We don't need them on no. stage. Mm -mm. And I'm like even less of a prude than you would ever be considered. So if I'm saying it's too much, yeah, let's take it down a notch. I just don't want it. Okay. <laughs> Showcase their real talents. Yeah. Oh, but then Lucy. Do we Freaking just want to jump into that? Sure. Because that's. I feel bad for her because she has run it forever. And she, I mean, she knows where to get the llamas that don't spit. Like some of the stuff, though. Do you do you really think that Maxie doesn't know to get the step and repeat? I mean, come on, Lucy. Most people basic fundraiser event 101 no you do that true and i'm sure there's some kind of outline from all the years past that said we mm. always do this 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 and i this. bet there's not i bet lucy has that up in her head really yeah oh see the I way that she like... was rattling off which llama you get which one you don't and why that woman has the entire thing in her head i don't think that she has it written down as a master plan Oh, see, I think those type of details she doesn't have written down, but the basic, we start here, These, this is the table arrangement, this is who we use for linens, this is what we do for this, blah, 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 is a plan somewhere. But also keep in mind, 10 years ago when Sabrina and Felix were bringing it back, she was very much okay with being hands-off and just spending the money. Yes. Because she supported that, right? I'm not, no, the you're whole not time crazy. I was like, yeah. was I misremembering that? She was like, oh, I just can't be there, but I'm so glad to hear that you're doing it. And this is why for Robin. For right. It was like she was always more concerned with what her wardrobe was than any of the other extra stuff. They Like they did. They made I mean, a joke of it. Right. Like she's the MC. She's the. I think that she doesn't give herself until now enough credit for all the work that she put in to pull it off. Right. But we've seen her willing to pass the torch to the next. Mm hmm. And that was to somebody she had zero clue even existed. Right. And this is Maxie, who she knows yes. and knows it can is party fully planned. capable of. And, yeah, Maxie's planned how many weddings and right. put together stuff. Like, she knows what she's doing. And as much as Lucy and Bobby don't get along, Bobby's been at the hospital forever. She knows years. what this is going. Yes. Like, what, how this is supposed to go. So, yes. Slight rewrite, but... Yeah. But I did feel bad for her because you knew she wanted to be involved. And it was right. like, can't she just make a phone call or write a list or something? But she's just like complaining about everything. Yeah. And Anna's like, if you leave, I am going to hunt you down. Yes. And then she said to Valentine, like, does it scare you or you were impressed or something like that about how her <laughs> yes. brain works? He's like, both. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Good writing on Valentine. Let's mm -hmm. just keep that going. And at least Lucy got a note from Martin. And she's going to go take the hottest bath ever and reread it and reread it and reread it. Okay. Yeah. I don't think they really, like, discovered anything else at the cabin. I can't think of them. No, but Lucy left. Yeah. And we saw her at the end of Friday looking like the mousy librarian we saw her introduced as, which I thought was a cool little... Yes. Because... For those who don't know, Lucy was not always the gorgeous, outgoing, vivacious personality that she is now. She came on as a librarian. A shy, hair pulled up, glasses on, muted tones, up to the neck, buttoned up. <laughs> Think of Angela Martin from The Office. That style of wardrobe. Yes. Was... Our Lucy. We'll have to do a 411, but that would take, because I would want to watch that whole thing. <sighs> that would be a long time. I didn't time. watch when she was like that. I've only yeah. known her as the way we know her now. I just remember finding that out, mm -hmm. that she had gone through that transformation. I guess go to Kevin and Laura, because that's kind of a little bit backwards-ish from where we were. Okay. And they were, they handled Ryan's remains. Yeah. I'd have thrown them in a trash can. <laughs> I'm really hoping 
that we are not going to, because didn't Kevin get messed up for a little while and thought that he was Ryan or mm-hmm. acted like Ryan? Can we not do that again? I do not want to do that We again. talked about that with his, um, when we did the recap of Ryan Chamberlain. Yes. But then he and Felicia wound up being apart or together, separate together, away from Laura and Mac. And she, she cried for two seconds and then was done. Yeah. Like super quick, right? Mm-hmm. Like she cried to him about, you know, needing forgiveness and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and why won't you do that for yourself? Yep. I'm like, are you faking? Was that fake or was that? Maybe she's just not a big crier in public all the time. Yeah. But that was a nice heart to heart that Mac and him finally had. That was cute. I just didn't understand her, her toasting saying, I'm so glad that the two of you are back to getting along. They haven't not got along. No, they just weren't it's talking. Been awkward. Like, hey, I just killed your brother. Right. I did my job. We know this whole dynamic. Yep. And Kevin even said, I didn't know what to say to you because I knew you must have your own feelings. And I didn't want you thinking that I was mad because it was your job and he was a murderer, so he needed to be stopped. They did give a nice quick recap, though, of how Kevin and Ryan were separated and about it's not a justification. However, it explains a lot of Ryan's mental state was the abuse that he went through at the hands of his own mother, Mm -hmm. so whom he killed. Yes, he did. But yeah, I did. I liked that they had the chance to talk. And Kevin even said, he's like, even though I know, you know, essentially like the world's better off. He said something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But I'm still grieving. He's my... He's my brother. Yes. Absolutely. You can grieve bad people. The only part that I didn't like about this scene was Felicia walked up and was like, hey, what are you guys doing? And they said, oh, sitting here trying to relax for the first time all day. Right. At a table for two with wine and like, okay, we're spending a moment together as a couple after a really rough day. And she's like, okay, mind if I sit down? <laughs> right. No, we, we don't want you here. We're trying to have some husband-wife time before we go back to our crazy schedules. And they didn't even leave it at just a rough day so that, you know, if, if you were out or... If- my right. husband and I were out, and you, like, oh, it's just been a rough day. Oh, do you mind if I join you? They specifically said, we're finalizing everything with Ryan. Yes. So that kind of throws up a big red flag there of, this is a very stressful situation. <laughs> right. Can can we just have a moment, please? But I'm glad at the end, it all worked out, and everyone, not made up, because again, they weren't fighting, but talked it out mm-hmm. and found their way back to their friendship. Yes. And then, was it after that that they went to see Esme? I think so. I'm assuming that was the next day then, because I'm like, that wasn't the end of your stressful day if you then went to see Esme. But they went to see Esme and the baby, and Spencer showed up, because why wouldn't he? Well, he was already there when they came in, because he was over at the coffee bar. Right. But Esme hadn't seen him yet. Correct. Well, his back was to them. And then, the oh, Laura... So good. Yep. That cannot be easy. Nope. But but she's trying to also guide Spencer without making him feel like she doesn't care about him Mm -hmm. and is just ditching him. It's no, no, no. If you seriously want any chance to have any kind of relationship, you need to let me. And he's old enough to understand. Mm -hmm. It's not like a little kid that just wants what they want because they want it. He's an adult He's supposed to be thinking of long-term what's best for his younger brother. And so she said to him, if you just go and respect this, then hopefully I can get more time with the baby. But if you keep throwing jabs at her and screaming and yelling, it's never going to happen. Nope. And so she made him leave. And then Esme was like, oh, thank you. I'm so glad I can trust you. But she didn't let them hold the baby. They didn't ask. I know, but I just feel like it's kind of weird. If grandparents come to see the baby, don't they see the baby like hold the baby because he was awake for most of that that's my other question you know how we've said repeatedly they do everything in one shot and that's Mm -hmm. it okay so at the end of that episode esme walks out with him asleep on her 
and then he comes she comes back in with him still asleep on her looking for the binky and uh trina is like are you looking for this blah 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 the next day when it opened up and did like the replay or whatever uh -huh. she comes in with the baby awake on her and Trina's like, oh, are you looking for this? That's not always the same scene because sometimes the dialogue is off like a word or two. Okay. It's not always the same exact scene from the day before. I think that it's the second recording of or whatever that. Okay. Yeah. Because like in my mind, you did it once. So how's the baby awake? And not There's awake. a lot of times that that changes. Yes. But I like definitely caught it this time. Yeah. I'm like baby asleep on your chest and baby head up. Like that's, Right. noticeable so i just wondered how that doesn't count as two different takes it probably it does yeah but for a lot of stuff they say they don't right but okay. i think whenever it's like it's a different scene yes they're quote recreating but they're not because it is a separate scene because they were laura and kevin were already gone yes it was a new scene with trina i don't think trina was in no i'm saying though that it showed it showed trina in both of them oh yeah because the then they just took two up. I would imagine that they reserve the multiple takes for the ones that have the children. Well, I'm just going to say that I didn't like it. They should have stuck with one or the other because he was asleep on her, which meant that she All didn't, right, you go control when a baby sleeps. And she didn't really need the binky then because she needed to just lay him down. But they might have also shot asleep. them two days apart, two separate days. Maybe, but I just, no. Mm -mm. Just rerun the same spot. But they don't always do that. That's what I'm saying. Right. I know they don't, but that's what they should do. It's rerun the same spot. It's the opening whatever. All right. <laughs> you can just agree with me and we'll move on. So Trina meets with her. Not that I don't care. I just, it, it was just babies wake up and go to sleep a lot. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, then Trina sits down with her and Esme was pretty open about you're just here. Before that, though, when Laura and Kevin were still there, they offered to take the baby. Oh, yeah. Because that's important in that the is, conversation with that Trina. It is important because it was ridiculous because they're like, we're not here to take your baby. But if you want to give us your baby, we'll take your baby. See, I thought that they were letting her know if you if you get overwhelmed by all of this, like you have support, we are happy to help you. If you are starting to feel like this might have not been the right decision to be having the baby in the prison, you have somewhere. And they somewhere. did point out that she may go to Darkham instead of staying there. Right. And that's exactly. a totally different situation. Exactly. So they were, I thought that they were, I think that the first offer was, yes, would you want this? Like, did you feel like you were backed into a corner that you had no other option? It was either prison or Spencer. We want to let you know. We are here and willing to take the baby if needed. The second she started to get upset, they were like, no, 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 no. This is your decision. We're just letting you know we are here. Here are possible things that could happen. I just feel like I would Try have waited until the next visit. Maybe. I wouldn't have thrown it all as one because it did feel like, like we were talking about with Drew and the ulterior motives. Yeah. I'm going to say nice things, but at the end of the day, give me those shares. Yeah. It felt like... What Laura was doing was saying all the right things, but at the end of the day, just give me that baby. See, I definitely thought that she was able to communicate that it was more about the baby's best interest, not her own. I liked and that it. it was Esme's decision on what that was and that she was being supported. I liked that part of Esme's reasoning was that she's creeped out by Kevin, though. Yes. That's a well, I thought that that a was solid a really, answer. Absolutely. And they respected that. And they're like... Yep. I don't think that that had occurred to them before. And it right. was, I think it did, but didn't. Mm -hmm. Like she knows, she knows he's dead, but she has to be able to work through that right. a little bit. Maybe Kevin should just keep his hands up the whole time that he talks to her. <laughs> like I'm someone different. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but anyway, so that was the conversation. And then they left and Trina showed up a couple minutes later and as they kind of caught her out and said, are you just here to see if I'm faking or, and sh Trina, did, you, did I pass the test? Yeah. Trina had no problem being like, yeah, that's exactly why I was here. I want to see if you remember or if you're just faking well, it. But she even said, you are really good at lying. Like, just so you know, you are an exceptional liar. Yes. And this, I'm sorry, this is a bigger continuity error than the baby. When did Trina find out that she was drugged? She never did. I, I lied. I did a tiny nerd of course she did. But Go ahead. 
The answer is never. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. Spencer didn't say it when he was on the... No, he found the medication, and but he never told her. Okay. Because I also don't know, because there was never a toxicology report done. Right. So he didn't know for sure. He didn't obviously know what, but he had never told Trina that. Okay. Trina was never told that. So how did she say? I don't know. That was, I'm sorry, that was a bigger. That is a bigger issue. I don't, I, for some reason I felt like she did know, but I can't tell you how or when she found out. So I went to Google. <laughs> Google and other social media platforms were also saying, I'm sorry, what? Okay. If, if you, viewer, li- listener, viewer, listener, because you're probably listening because you watch the show, let us know if and when Trina found out. But most people agree. But then Trina decided to talk with Joss and Cam and Spencer about dropping the charges against Esme Mm -hmm. and went to Diane and said, I want to drop it. And that was the case that she and, you know what, this week actually did really flow very well together. Yeah. Like these are all leading into each other very well. Right. But Diane made a really good point of here's the deal. If you try her now, she is a young mother who has amnesia. Right. She's and definitely they, going to not get the fullest sentence that she could. People are going to have if at all for her. So wait it out, get the material, get the evidence, so on and so forth, and get her then. Right. But then Esme got a letter from Heather. She threw it on the ground. Freaked her out. She didn't just throw it on the ground. She was scared of it. Really? Why are you scared of it? What do you think? It's possessed? not possessed but you don't want that person in your life why is she able to write her a letter and get it through i would have been super interested what's this crazy woman have to say to me now and ripped into it i wouldn't i would have had someone else read it (laughs) okay real quick back to the nurse's ball planning session with joss talking to bobby about it Mm. and she's talking about all the people we lost and she's talking about Britt and and joss just goes well, and Uncle Luke, thanks, Joss. <laughs> Thank you for reminding Bobby that she lost her brother. Yep. It was just, it, I don't like what they're doing with her. I didn't like that she said that, and I didn't like that she was speaking for Cam. She's like, <gasps> I don't think he's going to be up for because it. Because he's so brokenhearted over me. Get over yourself. Yeah. He has other things going on, honey. Exactly. <sighs> I I hated that. Right. Was that... That was after she had talked to him about going no, to Stanford. No, it was before. Oh, was it before? It was okay. before. So it's not even like right. she had come from it and then was like, hey, he's not even going to be around. Right. If her reasoning would have been he's leaving or he'll have already left then or something like that, then sure. Okay. You can give her the heads up that maybe he's not going to perform. Right. But no, that was all about me, 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 me. Yep. And he's then Bobby so said, sad. and then she finally told Bobby and she was yeah, I had a feeling, but you're you got a glow on you, so who's replaced him? No. <sighs> yeah. But Bobby's saying, I just want Luke to walk through the door and be like, hey Barbara Jean, it was a Yeah. But again, that is not his first line when he comes back. She made total sense. She's like, I know my brother. He would not have just died in some freak accident like that. Like, no, that's not what happened. So it makes me excited that maybe we're gonna get an answer i don't know that i think luke's gonna come back but a phone call or something Mm -hmm. so let's go to cam because he summoned everybody he did kelly's and it was very mature of him to include her because i don't know that i would have been that mature i might be like nope you broke up with me you don't care you don't get to know but he very quickly stopped sharing with her as soon as he remembered what he walked in on yeah and was like oh yeah that's right this is over and done like she doesn't need to know all of this but my first thought was he's switching schools in the spring quarter. Like my son just went back after spring break. Yes. What the heck? Somebody else messaged us, Steve from World Gone Good podcast messaged and was like, because all freshmen switch schools in the middle of the spring semester. Okay. I totally lied about my nerdiness this week. I just <laughs> forgot that I did it. That is actually how Stanford does it. Oh, really? Yep. They have quarters, not semesters. The spring quarter starts April 1st, and they even have, like, that day is undergraduate move-in day. The games for soccer will start in the fall. Oh, wow. So they go by quarters. So, like, they just had finals for the winter quarter. 
okay? They probably had their spring break, and now they are coming back for the new classes to start April 1st. Huh. Well, thank you for nerding out on that one. Yeah. That's actually helpful because, yes, I thought the same thing. You don't just go in the middle of a semester. No. If he would have said the end of the semester, like they wanted him to move in because some kids can stay over summer so right, that they right. can keep practicing. That would have made total sense to me. But no, I did not understand how he was moving in in the middle of a semester. So that makes sense. They're not semesters, they're quarters. Yep. I, I was super impressed by that, that they paid that attention to detail. I was but impressed, they still impressed by that. And I wish I had more knowledge of Stanford that I could have just been like, yeah, that's how it works. That was one of my top college choices. <laughs> But no, I had no idea. I didn't either. That's good. <laughs> Most schools do semesters. Yes. But not Stanford. Good for Cam. He needs to get out there. And I liked that the girls were both supportive and proud of him and happy. It was only Spencer that was like, no, you can't leave. I don't know why I had to turn it into being about Esme. Because that's whenever he should have yelled at Joss about her and Dex. If you were going to complain about something. But... At the end of the day, I'm glad that both of the girls were very supportive and happy. And then him and Joss had a heart to heart where they decided they could still be friends. They're not going to be, but that's okay. They at least had that talk of we should be. I was joking a few weeks ago when I said we were losing William Lipton. Yeah, thanks for that. I had zero clue. So if that had been out. I had not seen it. Yeah. I am not happy about that. He's, He's very, very talented. I just wonder if he's doing the same thing that Sydney Michaela did. And, you know, I mean, he has his own band, too. I said it before. He's Jonathan Jackson. Yep. Following in those footsteps. i very happy for him, but it makes me sad because he's been around for quite a while. Mm-hmm. So I guess we could just stick with Liz. See, this is actually rolling along pretty well. <laughs> From Cameron to Liz. And Liz told Victor that she told the cops everything. And then yep. he put his hand on her. And Carly stepped she in. She was ready to take him out. Didn't you ever learn not to put your hands on a woman? I was like, yes. You tell him. And then Liz That's reacted really good. Yeah. the way that Liz always would. Because her and Carly have that thing where she was like, I can take care of myself. And then they had a nice conversation. They did. And... Carly said I'd have done the exact same thing if Jason asked me to and then finally gave her the picture back of her parents. But she said something to Liz about how Carly, Carly, she learned a lesson that Liz hadn't yet. Yes. You have to be very careful with who you trust. Yes, because Jason would never have put her in the position that Nicholas has. Mm -hmm. And Jason would never have just up and left her the way that Nicholas did. Yep. And he wouldn't do that to Liz either because... Mm -hmm. No, he always took care of Liz. Yep. So I thought that that was really good of them because they kind of called a truce when the kids were dating. Yeah. They had I, that scene at the Metro Court where I, they basically were like, okay, we have five minutes, call each other all the names we want, let's ha hash it out, and then we're good to go because. Yeah. Yeah, she gave her the. And Liz even said, wow, that was a violation of my privacy. Thanks. Yep. But then went on to say thank, thank you. you for not listening. Yeah. Yep. No, I like them as friends, non-friends. And then Liz and Portia started bonding over bad parenting. Yes. <laughs> Not bad parent. Bad Mistakes that were made. Yes. And the mom guilt. Yes. Oh, the mom guilt. Yes. Yep. yep There's yep. no way to explain that. So it's one of those, if you know, you know, mm -hmm. because... But Elizabeth yeah. looked beautiful to go yes. with, to her meeting about her position, and then she walked out of the room with Portia, and Finn was there. And he yes. said again about how he would always support her and be on her side, and that was sweet. Yes. I like the chemistry they are, like, trying to build between the two of them, because we did not get that before. No. And it makes you actually want them together now. Like, oh, that's cute. He was flirty. Yep. But then Finn wound up telling Victor about the pathogen that was in his blood. <laughs> but he also called Finn out and said, but I know that you have a background with nurse weber so how do i know this right he's like sure get a second opinion have whoever run the blood it's fine at the end of the day what's wrong with you can't be fixed i'm sorry but also victor needs to accept that he is of a certain age 
that maybe but it sounded like he, even with the help of some medications it still was not going to be fixable which i feel like to any man at any age would be a hard blow to take <laughs> That is my 12-year-old humor coming out because I didn't know it at 12, but now I do at 40. <laughs> Anyhow. <sighs> okay. Did not mean that in <laughs> any kind of way. I want to know from our listeners, who laughs at that stuff with us? <laughs> right? You no, have to have a little humor. No, I, no, I want to know who laughs at the original... I don't want to say joke because when we say things like that, we're not intending for it to be a joke. We're just silly and stupid. But who laughs at that? It wasn't even being said to be silly or stupid. It was right. just poor choice of words at the time. Right. Who laughs at that? Kind of like your, um, what else do the French do comment that day? <laughs> um, I had other people asking me. <laughs> those kind oh. of comments. Who laughs at that? And who just starts laughing because we <laughs> laugh so hard when the other one messes up like that. So, hmm. what were we? We were talking about Victor and the pathogen, and it is incurable. Him talking, well, they can get him on some kind. It, it, it essentially kind of sounds like a detox. Is the impression that I'm getting that working out of his system? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All righty. <laughs> no idea where to go. <laughs> uh. Oh, I guess we could just stay on the medical stuff, and Liesl's medicine has to leave her system before she can harvest, before they can harvest her stem cells. I don't know how long the whole process takes, so I, I am completely ignorant to this. But the way that they said it, it was like, oh, she has to wait till the medicine gets out of her system. Like, it takes months to get blood thinners out of your system. It could take weeks. It doesn't really take weeks. Like when my You literally just said that you're ignorant nah, to nah, nah. No, I'm ignorant to the process of how long a drug has to be out of your body before yeah. you can do the stem cells. I am not ignorant to the part of how long blood thin thinners take to get out of your body. Because my mom is on blood thinners and whenever she has to go in for any type of surgery or whatever, they tell her to stay off of them for a week to ten days, depending on what surgery. Well, that's she's almost having two done. weeks. Yeah, but they made it sound like... But they like probably also need to say how she can't she's... do this for six months or something. That's not what... They didn't say that. They didn't say that, but But they have to wait, and that's that's two weeks. But then they probably also have to wait a couple additional days to see how Liesl is doing off of them before they go ahead and throw her into... But I just mean, to me, it was pushed off like a month, which I know is a long time because she's dying, but at the same time... Now we have an answer. It's a month. Right. Not six months, which is what it felt like their dramatics were. I know they didn't say six months. I didn't get months. that impression. I just got the... I thought it was going to be about a month. Like, that's kind of where I'm at is... Oh, so now, see, to me, the way that Liesl was like, but I have bad news, too. You have to wait till the medicine is all out of my body. And then everyone else was like, oh, but it's going to take time. It made me feel like... It was some crazy indefinite amount of time that they were going to have to wait. It's not that long. You'll be okay, I would hope. I don't know. So if she waits the two weeks before they can even... Because I would imagine that they also then have to test her before putting her under. Because, I mean, I don't know how they harvest the stem cells. Do they have to do like a little test to make sure that they're even an option before they go ahead and go full-blown and get the rest of them? Or... Do they just go for it? I think they just go for it. Hope for the best and... But again, I don't know. Luckily, my niece didn't have to get through all of that, so I don't know that side of it. Yeah. Um, I was under the impression it was more of like a month. I was just glad that we finally found a match and we weren't going to have the letdown again. 
that right. Liesl couldn't do it, and now who's going to be the match? But that also then explains why we were kind of hoping that Britt could, but she had that poison in her system, and so her body would not have been able to naturally release right. and replenish itself to have no poison. So maybe that is why. Maybe. <sighs> All right. So there's like kind of one other thing to get, but but I have a quick side. One day, I'm just going to time just how long the segments of Gregory saying absolutely nothing are. <laughs> and then Alexis asked if he had been drinking. Do you, do you think that that is what his problem is? No. Neither do I. We know that Finn's an addict, but I don't feel... I feel like because he knows that Finn is an addict and he knows that Alexis is an addict that he would have felt more comfortable saying at some point in time that he also struggled with whatever she was accusing him of struggling with pills or alcohol or whatever. And that was not, that was not anything that came up. He didn't sympathize. He didn't understand. He didn't get it or whatever. And he had never acted like that before in front of her. Right. Why wouldn't you think, are you okay? Did you just get dizzy? Did you just black out? Right. Did something me, along those lines? To me, that just wouldn't have been the first question. If she had seen him walking around with a bottle or constantly pulling out a flask the past couple weeks and then been like, oh, now I think this is a problem because you're falling down drunk. But I was more like, why aren't we calling 911? Functional 9 alcoholics are functional alcoholics for a reason, though. Yes. Uh, I was more like, why are we not calling 911 as soon as he started slurring his words and his speech wasn't matching up? To me, I'm like... Dude's having a stroke. Call 911. Right. No, we'll just make him get an Uber wherever he's going and keep his keys. And then spread the rumors to Sam that I'm pretty sure he's drunk. Yeah. And I blah, 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 blah. And Sam's like, really? I have no idea what that's like to deal with that. <laughs> <sighs> yep. That didn't, it just didn't go. No, it, it, I don't know. They just need to figure out what they're doing with them and have it start and stop or start in wherever it's going to peak because I feel like everyone sleeps to those scenes because no one cares. Like I feel bad that he fell over. Yeah. But I, we took too long to get here. Mm -hmm. I'm just tired of him giving no information all the time. He talks to the boys and he's like, no, everything's fine. No. He talks to Alexis. No, everything's fine. No. You see him wandering the halls of GH, but you don't see him actually interact with a specialist or someone that is going to give us an idea of what's wrong with him. Right. So it's just boring. Give us a hint or drop the story. Yep. And I don't want it to be where I don't like that Alexis talked to Sam about it because it sounded more accusatory than concern. Right. It, it sounded more he is and he's lying to me, which that is accusatory, but I do mean that like in the next level Yes. Accusatory, because there's levels of it. <laughs> it wasn't just, oh, I think. It's he is, and he's lying to me, and I know, because I am, and blah, 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 blah. But then I don't want it to come back where she's so wrong and should have seen, and then she asks for, for get, like, no. I don't. Oh. I just don't like any of it. Pick a direction and move on, because yep. this is not working for me or and a lot of other people, it sounds like. But then, like you talked about earlier, Christina, we saw, went to Sunny and asked for help in opening her own restaurant. And he talked her out of it. Yeah. Why? Do you know what she has the opportunity to do? She is going to the youth center and helping these youths that are having troubles. Oh, geez. Couldn't she create some kind of a restaurant that would actually involve those youths and give them work skills and give them self-esteem and confidence and ability to better the community around them also? Couldn't he have tied the two of those together, being that he has combined, I don't know, coffee shops and contraband? <laughs> I'm 100% with you if that would have been the train of thought that she was on or if they would have got there or whatever. But what she originally said was, I feel like I should open up my own bar because Dante and Sam are in one direction and Molly and TJ are in the other and I feel like I'm not growing like a growing up is supposed to. And he said, at the end of the day, what makes you happy? If you're happy where you're at, why change anything? Right. But she would be great. And I, I just wish that he had at least encouraged her to identify and not just limit it to, but you're happy at the youth center. And if you open a restaurant, you won't be able to do that. 
but I feel like he didn't want to have the next conversation, which would have been, if you're going to open up a restaurant, you should probably take some business classes. You don't have to. She's known, she worked for him, she's learned it. I don't know, Christine's kind of flip-floppy, or she has been in the past. She's responsible, though. I'm not saying it would be intentional, I'm just saying I think he was trying to protect her from getting in over her head and being miserable. And she has pretty smart resources around her that know how to run businesses that she can go to for mentorship. Yeah. Maybe she could get together with Mac and open one. Mac just said to Cody yes, about he not did. having yes, he did. the Outback anymore. Yeah. But they could go together 50-50 partners. He has experience already from the ground up, and she has experience in the day-to-day. Nice. See, Mac doesn't have any business training and he did pretty good yeah i guess so neither does Felicia. you don't have to have and this is someone with two business degrees saying you don't have to have two okay you just have to be able to she's at least worked in the environment yeah she I'm knows not it from the inside she knows out. a lot i just feel like sunny was trying to support her without pushing her and that when they started talking about money that education would have come into play not that he has some wonderful business degree either but yeah, he doesn't. But no, I'd like her to but, pair up with Mac. I just decided that. <clears throat> but no, I just, I mean, especially where there's so many different type of, I hate to say concept, but I don't know another word to use. But especially in identifying workplaces for my daughter, there has been a lot brought to my attention of places that have been created to provide experiences and work placement for people who might not otherwise be seen as employable and if she's working, and I don't know who these youths are, but I feel like they perhaps might have right. some struggles in life. This could help, and she could get, she could marry them. There's a place down in New Kensington. It's called the Need Community Cafe. Yes. And I love that place because their whole concept is you pay, we have suggested prices. If you can't pay it, pay what you can, or buy a meal for somebody else. And they also take on... It's a whole yes. economic system that they have, but their whole goal is to improve the community around them through various different ways of having this. And the food is supposed to be amazing. It is really good. They have a really good wedding soup. Just throwing that out there. I was a fan. I love the concept. We have not tried it yet. One of those things keeps saying we'll get to and we don't, but I love the idea of it. But that's something that Christina could do. Because she, she just wants to change the world, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. She can. Maybe they will listen to us and change it up. Maybe. And the books on uh, the books on Sunny's coffee table were boxed <laughs> Havana Boxing Club and Gordon Park Gordon Parks Muhammad Ali. Okay, so all boxing themed. But then Carly brought Donna over with her drops, with her eardrops, and Sunny says, "Doesn't." Doesn't she? Didn't you get my message about me not taking Donna tonight? And then she's like, yeah, what's up with all these guards? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And then they have like an intimate conversation about how he would never let anything happen to her or the girls and that he's beefed up security and all that stuff. And that's whenever Nina walks in and is like, wait, they're just a little too cozy. And when I tried to ask Sonny about his business, he reminded me that I didn't want to know anything about it. And previous to that is when she had been talking with Phyllis about how, no, I thought he just wasn't going to do this anymore whenever we came back. Nina, you're smarter. And my gosh, this is like a Nina appreciation for you. It's not. It's not appreciation. I just don't like whenever we dumb down women that aren't dumb. She In order may, to appease a man. Yes, exactly. She may be in love and her thoughts are clouded as sometimes they get. But there's still some basic knowledge there that you know that you know. And even if you doubted she it to yourself. Say, though, she only knew of his reputation before Nixon falls. Oh, all right. Now that's just a cop out. But she hadn't. I, I Off top of mind, I cannot think of a time that she firsthand witnessed anything. I could be totally mistaken. And just totally not remembering something. But she was also with Valentin, who wasn't exactly, you know, right. And she Mr. was by the book. She knew of Britt being with Jason and the fact that Jason was part of Sonny's. She knew. Um, 
She was Nina was in Nixon Falls when Britt was with Jason. But she talked to Aunt Liesel and them. Okay. I just don't right. buy it. She's not as naive to what his work was. And right. I just feel like that's a blinder she couldn't have had on. Sometimes we do ignore things because it's easier that way. But And Phyllis even said, is this something that you can handle? And she's like, well, I guess Carly can, but I can't. Mm-hmm. Once again, be careful what you ask for because you might get it. Shouldn't be trying to steal somebody else's husband and then realize, oh, wait, I didn't actually want that anyway because it's a little more complicated than what you thought. I didn't like that Frank called Carly Mrs. C. That's what Max called her. I feel like they all just kind of did. No. But I like, did like how quickly he corrected. He's like, wait, yes. nope. Spencer, 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 sorry. Yep, I'll get used to it. I'm sorry. Aw, but Dex talking to Donna was cute. Yeah. Okay, there was something going on there because... Seriously, can we not have Sonny have another kid? <laughs> if we are trying to make Dex Sonny's kid, I'm done. No, I'm not, but... No. Ew! No, see, because I thought he's they were sleeping gonna... with his stepsister. No, I thought they were going to try to make Dex... Jason's... Dante's. Oh, yeah, that could... And that that was going to be part of the big secret. Oh, that Dex was the baby that Dante... And his ex-girlfriend gave away, and that's why Cody knows about it, and Cody said that the baby was his. Yeah. Okay. I, is that enough to ruin Cody's life, though? And the... See, I think... Well, I think <clears throat> that if you look at it as Cody would have <gasps> accepted responsibility... What if Cody took not? the test for Co Dante to get into oh, police, police academy. academy? That would be good, too. Sorry, I didn't mean to, like, no, just totally cut you off. You could totally cut me off. No, that's fine. Uh, that that would be awful, But Dante too. still would have had to have become a detective on his own. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like Dante did something really, really bad that otherwise would have prevented him from becoming a cop. And Cody took... We've already talked about this. Cody took the fall for it, and that is why Cody has struggled, because it has prevented him from moving forward. A yes. baby wouldn't do that. No, but what if they accidentally hurt the mom or something? Yeah, real dark. So you're saying that fell, Dante killed the mother of his child before he fell down those stairs and at Cody camp took or the blame something? for it? All right, that is just whole other level. No, no, I didn't say on purpose. I did not say murdered the mother of his child. I said I didn't maybe say murdered. I said killed accidentally. That can happened, be a kill. and that Cody took the blame for it, so that. He could go on and become a police officer. And yeah, but I don't feel like Cody would, would have abandoned record. the baby. That's what I'm saying is, like, a baby would not have... But maybe the baby never came to be. Maybe she was, Then like, where's really... Dex fit in? I don't know. But that was... Go different ways. I don't know. I didn't write the whole story out. I just thought that that's what they were going to start putting together. See, I thought we were going more with Jason. I oh, know I don't think Dex is Jason's baby. God. I don't like that idea. I don't I don't know. I don't like the Dante idea. He doesn't even look like him. He kind of could resemble Jason more though. You don't know what the mothers would have looked like. No. Nope. So. I don't know. I'm just We need Dex's but I just thought it was sweet how he interacted with Donna and I felt like there was something more familial there behind his interaction with her than just being a sweet guy that's just, no, I'm just staying here for a day or two and maybe, but then I'll maybe be gone. Maybe that's because he knows that that's Joss's little sister and he's heard her talk about okay. how adorable Donna okay. is. Ooh, I liked Sunny telling Carly about Dex's incident, mm -hmm. not knowing that there's other stuff going on there. Yep. I don't know. So he snuck out, Dex snuck out and went <sighs> to... His apartment, which Joss is just there without giving him any heads up, which, hello, dangerous, but okay. And then she asks him where he's been and everything, and she makes him take off his shirt. And she gives Sunny's oh, doctor yeah, a compliment. Oh, yeah, a professional doctor did a better job than me who has <laughs> yeah. no medical training. I am so surprised by this. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well. I, I don't like, I just don't like their relationship right now but like you were all about it no i think they're cute and like 
It's cute how... This is what I was saying. You can't just build an entire relationship on hormones. Because now we're two months into hormones and it's just like, well, okay. I guess I thought we were going to change from hormones to something else faster. Mm. You can have initial attraction and then build off of that. It doesn't have to just be attraction and Keep taking off your shirt. <laughs> that makes it a little harder, but it's okay. Yes. You could still have conversations beyond, are you going to quit your job? Your job's Can I dangerous. Can you asparagus? In bed. <laughs> but it's just... Alrighty, I don't know that I have anything else besides that. I don't either. It, I was actually just more happy that they still had the gun in his, because he put the gun in his back. Yes. And then when he took off the shirt, I was like, if that gun is gone. Right. But it was still there. So, yay, continuity. Yes. All right. Do, do, do. Reality check. Have anything fun? Oh, I did have something fun. I think I've talked about it before. There's the organization in McKeesport called Jamie's Dream Team. Mm -hmm. So they do different tip boards for all different prizes of things. And the money goes towards uh, granting wishes for kids that are really sick or terminally ill. Kind of like Make-A-Wish, but it's more on a local level. And so they had a raffle for a weekend getaway at Ocean City. And I won. Nice. Congratulations. So, I'm very excited. That's cool. I have never been to Ocean City. Oh, that'll be nice. So, and you know, like everyone, we're always like, we should go somewhere. We should do something just for like a weekend, just the two mm -hmm. of us. And it never happens. Now you so, have to. Yes, exactly. I was like, we are going to Ocean City. And the kids, you know, their dad can go to different countries without them. And they're like, oh, that's fine. But I said, we're going to Ocean City. And they're so angry. <laughs> So they'll get over it, but they will. I just thought it was funny that they're like, seriously, you're going on vacation. It's, it's a weekend. Give me a break. Right. But Give me three days. Exactly. Yeah. But I was like, my buying... kids just always reacted like, what do you mean you guys did something while we were gone? <laughs> if they came home and saw takeout boxes, like you guys went out to eat with yes. us. Yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> right. We did. We didn't just sit on the couch and wait for you to come home. No. I'm sorry. So Yeah. Just very it's funny, awesome. but I, yeah, I'm excited because I've never been, and I love Jamie's dream team because it makes me feel like everything that I try to win, even if I don't win, the money's going towards a good... Somebody wins. Right, exactly. And it, they're never crazy expensive, you know, you can spare $10, $15, and if you win, great, and if not, it was $10, $15, bucks, whatever. Right. So, that was my exciting thing. Fun. Yeah, look at that, about me instead of about the kids. Pat me on the back. <laughs> I mean, I could talk about my kids every single week. But I feel like I do talk about my kids every single week. That's what I'm saying is that's like a all about me. I don't know. Oh, we had our office awards. I was going to say not about the awards. I was going to say <laughs> um, I saw cute pictures of you in St. Patrick's Day outfits. So don't tell me you we didn't do anything We weren't in St. Patrick's Day outfits. We were just wearing shirts that said shenanigans squad. Yes. It's very because cute. Because there's a couple people that that applies to. Yes. And so it was fun. But my office had, so we had our St. Patrick's Day party, but then we also coupled it with my manager make sure to recognize us in the office, mm -hmm. too. And she gave us shamrocks. Aww. And so I got, I actually got two because there was something going on company-wide that she recognized those of us that participated it, in it, mm -hmm. in the company thing. I came in second in our office for those who participated. Oh, cool. So I got one shamrock for that, and then I got another shamrock for the national award that we earned last year, and it was a fun day. My daughter took apart her brother's bed yesterday because they are switching rooms. Did you cry? I did not because no. I did not stay in there beyond taking oh. that picture. <laughs> okay. I'm working on it, so we'll just see what happens. So they're in the process of doing that. I think I made my husband a little upset because she has been asking to paint her room for years. She did paint it when we moved in, obviously, but she's wanted to change it up. Maybe just two or three years. It, it might have been during COVID that she was like, I want to paint my room too. Yeah. And we didn't. It was because we painted all, we painted our bedroom and the living room. And that's when she was like, I want to paint the room. But I'm not getting into our entire remodeling thing. <laughs> but I said, I was like, well... If she still wants to paint her room, we should do it now while we're taking everything out instead of waiting till everything's in and then having to figure out painting. And he just looked at me. I was like, would you rather move everything in and then decide to paint the room? 
Right. So, yeah, just in the process of swapping rooms. And I never did that as a kid, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just a, a lot getting ready for our national convention next week. So that's the one I'm jealous of. Can you stow me away in your carry-on? No, carry-ons are expensive. Or not carry-on. Checked bags are expensive now. Yeah, that's why I'm, I said carry-on. <laughs> I'm shooting for carry-on only. I'm sorry. You're you're <laughs> taller than the carry-on size. Oh, man. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. So join us on Thursday. We lied. I can't remember if we said last week was the last part of Windermere, but we were looking at the travel guide to Port Charles for something else and came across a pretty awesome write-up of Spoon Island. So we are going to finish the Windermere yes. breakdown by talking about Spoon Island. It's going to be fun. It will be. So have a good week. And we'll meet at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at pier54podcast at gmail.com. 